Richardson, okay. Burlington, Joe. Yeah. Trader Joe. Well, thanks everyone for coming. I know it's starting to get cold out and it's close to the holidays. It's uh, hard to make time for things like this, but um, I appreciate it. And um, Professor Durant, she told me about this. She's um, a nutrition, she's an RD, and she also uh, teaches at SUNY Plattsburgh. So she told me about this and um, gave me the opportunity to present maybe a 20 minute presentation on eating healthy around the holidays. So um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm a, I'm a junior nutri nutrition major at Plattsburgh and um, I volunteer at home at a hospital in, in the food service department. So um, I'm very passionate about sharing my knowledge about this. So um, eating for health, managing diabetes on the tempting holiday season. Why do you think I call it a tempting holiday season? Because all the added goodies. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's sometimes hard for us to, to avoid um, sweets that are common, that are, that are out, you know, present on the, on the table, and, you know, it's hard for us to always pass that down. Um, however, there are definitely solutions we can take that will help us manage diabetes and will, um, will help stabilize blood sugar levels, and I'll talk about that. So I'm sure you've heard before about the importance to have um, balanced blood glucose, blood sugar. We call it glucose. Um, that just refers to your body's blood sugar. And so when you eat a meal, any kind of food that you eat raises your blood sugar. The, the, the important thing to note is to what extent it raises this. And so what we're, what we're looking at is blood sugar is significantly raised by what's called simple carbohydrates. These are things like maybe your white breads, your, your white pastas, your refined grains. Also, um, fruit and fruit juice. Now, I want to make it an important note that fruit is not necessarily a bad thing. It's good, it's good to have. It has fiber. It has nutrients for us. However, it does raise our blood sugar significantly, so in moderation, it's important. And um, also, added to a lot of drinks now, in addition to added sugar, is also high fructose corn syrup. And that's very, very bad in terms of like blood sugar, because it goes right, goes right to your liver and creates a bad effect internally. So these are some things we might want to lessen in our diet. On the good news, um, it's maintained our blood sugar by fiber, whole grains, and um, whole grains, nuts and seeds, and vegetables are all very good sources of fiber, very commonly available. And there's also um, some research about spices and herbs that can be used in our meals to help, in addition to enhance the flavor of our foods, to help stabilize our blood sugar after we eat them as well. So. If you have any questions about this, just feel free to stop me. This is a conversation, not supposed to be a lecture. So, vegetables are always important in terms of um, blood sugar or any, any disease that we're managing. But um, some noteworthy vegetables I wanted to point out are uh, broccoli because it's, a, it's considered a non-starchy vegetable, so it's not as, not as much carbohydrate involved. It has, for a three-quarters cup of serving, it has seven grams of fiber and 20 calories. So it's going to give you, it's going to keep you full, and it's going to help um, lower your blood sugar spikes when you have meals. It's also high in vitamin C and potassium. And also, zucchini squash has, for every half cup of serving that you have of zucchini, it has three grams of fiber and only seven calories. So, and in addition, it's high in vitamins A, C, vitamin K, and folate. And um, this is from wehealny.org. So that's just a, a website that lists some common vegetables and their uh, their fiber and content and their nutrient content. So you could reference wehealny.org for more information about that. Okay. 
So in addition to vegetables, we have what's called legumes. And now these are our beans, you know, our beans and like peas would be also considered legumes. Um, these are good because they're very, again, very high in fiber and they have, they, they help keep us full and they don't have too much sugar. So if you're, if you're choosing like black beans, for example, they have over 19 grams of fiber and 190 calories for a one cup serving. So that's a lot of fiber. However, I also want to note that beans, they do have more carbohydrates than say something like broccoli would. So they're considered more of a starchy kind of food than your vegetables would. Um, most of the beans are similar to black beans in terms of their fiber and calorie content, except for white beans. Um, so white beans are not as common, but they have uh, also eight grams of fiber, 80 calories for a half a cup serving. So um, what, you, what you can do is you can actually take half, if, if the food content contains five or more grams of fiber, you can take half of that fiber content and um, subtract it from your, from your carb counting. Professor Durant, she, she spoke about that. So let's just take a look. And in terms of spices, there are, um, there's more research that's being developed now, but some of the research that already is out shows that um, spices such as turmeric, which is actually a popular ingredient in curry spice, uh, I passed it around um, before. So that can help um, lower your blood sugar after meals. And um, cinnamon, very popular, actually recommended by the American Diabetes Association to help stabilize blood sugar levels. And um, ginger, which is, um, which is a root herb that's actually related to turmeric, shows um, powerful effects in that too in addition to chili pepper. Um, not everybody likes it or can tolerate it very well, but um, there's growing research that shows that um, chili pepper um, can help with the blood sugar reduction. So this, what do you do with that turmeric? I mean, yeah. what, do you, what do you put it on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, I, uh, like when I make a vegetable chili, for instance, I'll I'll add some of, some of that to it because I, it has a kind of earthy flavor. It's like very rich, so you can only you only really need a little bit, and it goes goes a long way. But you can you can add it. Some people even make like teas with it. There's various different um, foods that you can add it to. Some people add it to their eggs in the morning, and um, you can you can consume it a variety of different ways. And uh, this is actually from Livestrong.com, so the, the group Livestrong from um, the uh, from Lance Armstrong and everything mm -hmm. that uh, shows research about these herbs, blood mm -hmm. sugar. So um, I want to emphasize the role of the importance of our choices that we make individually, or maybe sometimes other people make choices for us. And um, however, it still has a very important effect on um, how how our bodies react and um, the like. So we have it, when we when we go in a grocery store, we have tons of options. We have whole foods, we have processed foods, we have grab and go meals, we have you know a variety of things we can put together to make meals. Ideally, especially with um, individuals with diabetes, it's important to opt for whole foods rather than processed foods. Reason being, whole foods, you're getting just a, like a whole vegetable, not added ingredients. Maybe, maybe sometimes they have like sugar added to pre-made meals or um, even, especially with desserts, you know, you can add, you can buy the fruit yourself and maybe make like a, a blend with it instead of you know, an apple pie that might have 20 grams of sugar added to it. Also, variety. There's no one food, spice, or nutrient that's going to exactly, that's deemed as a cure-all. You know, the importance is to have a variety of vegetables and herbs that we choose from so that 
A, it's not to limit ourselves, not to make things boring, but B, to get the different benefits. You know, broccoli has vitamin C. Um, sweet potatoes have more vitamin A. So we want to have everything in a, in a rotational sense. And also, um, cooking. It's, I think it helps to be active in uh, the cooking process of meals because it's showing you, it's giving you a front row seat as to what is in your food that you're eating. And it helps um, increase interest, interest in your food. You know, you want to be involved with what you're eating and um, how that, how that, whether you like it or not, what spices you like, what ingredients you like. And you could add a variety of vegetables. You can make things differently in different ways. So, going off of that, I have some recipes. I had the recipes that I handed out to you. Those are actually dessert recipes that my mom uses. We make, you know, when I'm home, I make that with her sometimes. And um, to know, sometimes like the sugar on that is not exactly the sugar that we even use, but especially, you know, if you have diabetes, it's very important to watch that. So it can be replaced. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, one popular spice that can help, or it's considered an herb, that can help um, replace sugar is called stevia, and that's S-T-E-V-I-A, and that's actually, um, it won't raise your blood sugar any. It tastes very sweet though, and it's low calories, and it's natural. It comes from a, a leaf, a leaf extract. So that's, to me, I like that. Some people don't. Um, also, you can use um, honey in moderation. You know, different, different sweeteners out, are out there, and there's a growing list of them. Um, but also, in terms of recipes, uh, the American Diabetes Association, their website is uh, diabetes.org, and they have right now what's called the fall foods list, where maybe, you know, they're going to eventually create a winter foods list, but I saw that on their site last I checked, they had a fall foods list, and now this is for, um, specifically with um, diabetes and great meals, you know, vegetables that can help with your blood sugar and um, very tasty looking meals as well. Also, um, in general, two good ones are prevention.com and uh, cookinglight.com. Cookinglight.com has a section called Smart Choices and that's where you get your more healthier meals because some, some of these, sometimes these websites can have um, desserts on there that aren't exactly healthiest food. So, I kind of covered a lot. If there's any of you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them the best that I can. Joe, I just wanted to mention we were talking about vegetables. We talked about broccoli. Um, but I found for myself mm -hmm. that green beans are the best for, m for my sugar. Okay. And I want to pass it on to you. Because that's just pretty much the safest. It's bland. You don't have all that gas formation right. that you have. And you know, and beans, I love them, but I can't eat them right. because I have stomach problems. So, mm -hmm. so you have to be careful of gas stuff. Yeah, it's. It, but the green beans, Joe, are perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you think that's a good one? The green I, beans. I would say I would say that's a good one. You know, they're high in fiber. Okay. They have. Um, they have potassium, they have protein, they have they have nutrients to keep you full, and they're not going to spike your blood sugar very much, they're not that starchy. Um, but again, different people can tolerate different foods, you know, some people, some people might tolerate uh, broccoli or cauliflower better than beans, or um, maybe like whole grains better than some other types of grains, you know, so it's... Again, it's important to have variety. There's a lot. There's a lot of good foods out there that we can eat, and what I just mentioned is a small fraction of them. So, but yeah, I would I would say that's that's good. So with beans, though, tell me, I never make them, but sometimes they say like if you soak them, mm -hmm. does that take some of the, the gas forming properties that's, out of yeah, them? Yeah, that that I, I, I heard that helps like to, to rinse. Um, I heard it helps to rinse the beans before you eat them mm -hmm. to help with, uh, you know, digestibility. So that's that's usually, you know, unless they come from a can and they're, they're, you, know, you just rinse them and then you can put them in a meal. 
and um, that can help as well. So. Yeah, if anyone else has anything they'd like to edit. Another question, like yeah, for example, sure. if you want to substitute, mm -hmm. if you want to use the stevia, yeah. <clears throat> say the recipe calls for a half a, half a cup of sugar, mm -hmm. would you use the same amount of the stevia? Um, no, I would I would I wouldn't personally. Less. I mean I would I would look, I less. would use less because very stevia stevia is very very powerful, it's very sweet. I think it would tell you on the box what Yeah, it, it usually does, you know. They have mm -hmm. like they have like um, a lot of supermarkets now have like stevia out, you know, some Truvia I think is one of the <laughs> brands it's labeled as. But they have other ones depending on which which supermarket you go to. Um, I'm sorry, you, you came in and made a you This is some dessert recipes that we can use for the holidays. Thank you. Did you see this turmeric, Jim? Pardon? Oh, you started yeah, exactly. that out, didn't you? Yeah. Because that's a new one to me. I don't Where remember. Where did you get it? Pardon? Where did you buy it? Cool. It's just Trader Joe's. The co yeah, that co has it. Oh, that the co op has it. The co op it? has it, but yeah. it might be under curcumin. Yeah, curcumin. That's yeah. actually the that's the active compound in turmeric that's responsible for a lot of its benefits. Mm -hmm. And it'll also help you with your neuropathy in your feet if you do have it. Mm -hmm. so once you get it into your system, yeah, it's, it it's very works uh, very well. Except your sweat might have a little of yeah. an earthy smell, but yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what my wife tells me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing's perfect. No. So if you ever have those dinners up there at the college, yeah. would they uh, advertise them in the newspaper? They, uh, well, I would, I'm not sure, I'm not too familiar, like maybe in Cardinal Points they might have it, or the Press Republican, I'm not sure if they would cover it, because it's not like... Because they're special. so enjoyable, unless, I didn't know unless if they yeah. still had them. Yeah, they, we do have theme meals, you know, we're probably have a winter fest, maybe when we come back or something like that. But um, yeah, we, we do theme meals and we base it around a, a certain idea. Maybe the idea is uh, cooking light or something like that. So adding you know, less calories to a, to a traditional sandwich wrap. So how might we do that? We might replace the, um, we might replace some, I don't know, High fatty foods with maybe a more complex carbohydrate kind of food. So, yeah. tell, tell me about rice. Yeah. Is I've heard that there's arsenic in rice. Yeah, that's actually a recent thing that's been uh, uh, coming out now to the FDA and everything. There's been growing amounts of arsenic detected in rice, and I again like there's. No food exactly is 100% pure. You know, I think it's important to state that that any kind of food, especially nowadays, is going to have something on it. You know, so I wouldn't. Ideally, I, I I wouldn't worry too much about like if you're if you're not having rice with every single meal. You know, if you have rice occasionally with meals, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I I personally I consume a lot of rice. It's not. I, 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 don't, I think the worrying about it would probably do more damage than actually the ground rice. Uh, ground rice is better for you, Joe, isn't it? Yeah, brown rice? in terms of like, yeah, brown yeah, rice because brown, brown rice, it has the whole hull on it, the whole hull of the grain that's going to have more fiber. So it's not as like, it's a, it's a complex carb maybe rather than a simple carb. So that would help. And they, they're, they're different grains, you know, whole grain pasta as opposed to white pasta. Um, quin quinoa is also an important grain, high fiber, high protein. So that's, that's another one that's becoming more popular now. 
So what about potatoes? Yeah. I mean, we have, you know, you're just a wealth of information. I mean, That's right. what about potatoes? Yeah. You know, what's a good way to, uh, now potatoes, I know they're starchy. Yes. Um, but they're mild. Mm -hmm. So what would be a good way to prepare potatoes for dinner? Okay, well, I, um, there's different, there's a whole different variety of potatoes that we could do. I mean, I personally, I like red potatoes. You know, because they're very, they're a little bit more nutrient dense than like your say, say your just plain white potatoes. Mm -hmm. And you could actually leave the skin on, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people peel the skin, but that, that has fiber, that has nutrients that you're actually peeling off. So you could, you could leave the, the skin on and just wash them very good and then just dice them up. And then maybe like if you're making a stew or something or a soup, you can use that. Um, some people like the potatoes themselves, I don't think are the culprit. Some people like, it's what they put on the potato. They might get a baked potato and, you know, for instance, I got a baked potato just before at the cafe here. But I, that's all I got. I just got the baked potato. I put some pepper on it, you know, it's fine. But some people load up the butter, the sour cream and everything and that creates more problems. But I think it's good, it's good in general. I mean, you could, as long as you wash it good, I think you could pretty much leave the skin on them. You know? Maybe boil, boil them? Boil them, yeah. You could boil them? Yeah, you could boil them. Yes. Aren't sweet potatoes better than the white potatoes? Sweet potatoes, yeah, but I mean, they're, they're also, again, starchy, you know, they have, oh, yeah. they're going to raise your, your glycemic index, but they, they do have fiber, they do have um, some some things, they, they, they're they rich in vitamin A and potassium, so they're going to, they're not all bad, but you know, if you have maybe like even just a half a serving of sweet potatoes with a meal, but if you're having vegetables with it, maybe you're having a salad with it, that's going to counteract the blood sugar spikes. So, again, it's important to have a variety, you know, not just not just like one single food to like be fixated on because that's not going to be the best for you. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, you just came in, but um, these are just some websites that I reference for healthy recipes around the holidays. So you can you can write these down and maybe reference them. Um, in addition to the ones I passed out, those are just ones I use personally at home. Have a computer right now. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, whenever you're free or they'll, they'll always be around. So. It's, Anyone else have anything? Okay, well, thank you for your time. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned some um, some information now. And uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed this. So, thank so you. will you come back again and talk to us? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, uh, I'm sure Angela will keep me posted on this. So. Um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to do. Is that's okay? Come back. That's, that's okay. Yes, definitely. Because, I mean, we, we want to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Yeah. I, I love sharing information like this. So. Okay. Well, thank you, Joe. Thank you.